Jim, spell your last name for us. Well, I, uh, I traditionally spell it O-U-E-L-L-E-T, but there are many, many iterations of that there that are. I've seen through the years. <laughs> and it's pronounced Wallet. It is. Right. I will let you go. I like that. All right. If we won't let you go until you pick up the tab on all of the free grade on test kits today. What, what is the, uh, the uh, origin of the name? What, uh, it, it is a uh, French persuasion, and mm -hmm. uh, I guess I have a grandfather who somehow uh, traveled down from Canada many, 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 many moons ago. Yeah, so there's some hockey in the back. Oh, we can drop the puck. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said that. Yeah. There, I can hear the little French-Canadian. Uh, uh, yeah. I had, I had a year of French in ninth grade, which was uh, 46 years ago now. So I'm fluent in ninth grade French from 46 years ago. Well, I, I had to take uh, uh, French for working on one of my, uh, uh, for graduate school, and I had a tutor. And after several weeks, she said, Stubblefield, I'm wasting your money and you're wasting my time. <laughs> so, so we gave up on it. Yeah, uh, it, I remember this from my ninth grade French class, right? Où est Lucie? Lucie est à la piscine avec qui? Avec Richard. Which means, where's Lucie? Lucie's in the swimming pool with who? With Richard. That's all I know. If I go to France, I got to hang out by the swimming pool all day and hope I can find someone named Lucie and Richard. Or I'm sunk. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. People say, what did you do in, in France? Yeah. Did you go to some great restaurants, see the museums? I hung out at the pool with Lucy and Richard. That's all I could do. Do you want me to repeat that phrase, Rob? If you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I do mind. I do mind, yeah. Uh, Bill, if you could, because of your background at the Berkeley County Commission and your familiarity with the, with the water services in, in our community, give us a little uh, build-up for Jim here. Yeah, uh, the water service... Uh, is is quite critical to to our growth uh, i can remember several years ago we came within one day of running out of water in south berkeley was literally, that during that bad drought summer? that's bad drought yeah, yeah literally one day and since then we uh because the well they had in south berkeley was uh was marginal that they're, they're doing correction on it now mm -hmm. uh but we we're trying to look for quarry water anywhere we could find water uh since then uh they we've started emphasizing the river growing water out of the river and using a distribution line from the river plant down to south berkeley and everywhere else in the in the county but with the river it was uh, it's funny uh uh from day one the early early days of our government uh the river has been owned by one particular state and in our case the potomac river it was run owned and managed by maryland mm -hmm. virginia and west virginia had no real say so so maryland made the determination how much water it could grow out of it and and I believe in those days we get maybe one and a half million gallons or two million gallons per day. Well, Virginia, with its growth period, uh, said they needed more water. And as a consequence, they were grow growing a lot more water out of the Potomac than Maryland was happy with. So Maryland said, you can't do this. It's going to limit your water. And Virginia said, nope. We're going to take you to court. So they took the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court sided with Virginia. And as a consequence, uh, West Virginia benefited from the uh, Supreme Court decision. So uh, we still work very closely with uh, with Maryland about, about the water. But an agreement now, I think, going up from 1.5, and Jim will correct me, uh, over 10 million gallons a day that we can draw uh, or a sizable amount. But anyway, we're very dependent uh, upon the river. But also, uh, the uh, the water district I think has done a very admirable job of, through the years of keeping up with with the growth pattern. If we had not had a very aggressive, let's find new water, let's improve our distribution mm -hmm. lines, uh, we would have uh, we'd not be able to supply the water that we do now. And one of the big things that uh, the water district did uh, maybe eight, seven, eight, nine years or so ago was hire Jim from Texas where he had a sterling career in, in Texas with the water management. So, uh, so Jim, you've done well. You and the, the board and the employees of the water district. Jim is the executive director of the Berkeley County Water District, and Jim, great to have you with us. And man. you noticed I did not try to pronounce his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jim, give us an, a quick uh, snapshot of what it is that your job entails. Well, we, uh, <clears throat> you know, we provide the water for 
over 30,000 customers now, which is probably somewhere in 80 and 90,000 uh, population here in our, our community. And uh, we have a tremendous amount of uh, capital projects underway to meet those needs that the <coughs> Admiral spoke of. And uh, uh, one thing, just, just for an interesting clarification, as I understand it, there is no limitations on the amount of water we have could withdraw from America. You, you may well be right. Yeah. yeah, we 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 tend to draw. We're growing plans to draw around ten million gallons a day. Something you're like correct. That. Okay, yep. but you're right. At the Supreme Court, there's probably no limitation. The, however, let me correct that. There is one limitation, and it applies to everybody, and that's the Chesapeake Bay. There has to be a certain amount of water going in Chesapeake Bay. If that does not happen, then all the area will have to cut back on the water. Yeah, this is uh, <clears throat> one of those situations where you have a certain amount of flow that reads to require to produce the, keep the salt water wedge That's right. out into the ocean right. so it doesn't come into the intakes for yeah. some of the water purveyors down in the Washington area. That's right. So Jim, do you, you right. deal strictly with water taken from the Potomac? No, we, um, we have – our primary source of water is the Potomac River. And it, we're fortunate because it is a relatively drought-resistant source of water. Uh, as the Admiral mentioned, uh, we also depend on a spring down in the Inwood area. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, groundwater is susceptible to weather and drought. And so if you have a condition like you experienced back in, I think, 2001. 2001, 2002. Where you yeah. had an extended mm -hmm. period of drought, that uh, source of water diminishes quite a bit. And that was 2001. Now we have a population much greater. So we are trying to make provisions in order to be able to utilize the river plant with the river water and move it further south so we can then restrict the area served by the spring down there so we can have better ability to serve water in all conditions. Does that um, move through a series of pipes and such and whatever? Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, one of our challenges is that the, the river is up here in the north end of the county right. and that we have a population we serve throughout the county. So our challenge is to be able to get the water treated up here but then convey it to where it's needed to be and that requires a lot of water main installations, some pumping stations, because we're the, uh, the interesting thing about this is water usually flows from north to south. Up here, in this general area, it flows from south to north, so we're pumping uphill as we push it down towards Virginia. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the hydraulic uh, challenges we have in front of us, but we're overcoming it, and uh, we actually, um, one of our most recent uh, projects we just went out to bid on in the end of March is the ability to take water from where we've been able to move it to, which is down around the, the jail on Route 9, yeah. and then move it further south into the area where uh, Procter & Gamble and some other large users are so we can, can better, more efficiently get the water from where it is, once again, to where it needs to be. And uh, is the infrastructure in place right now to provide all that water to the south end of the county, Jim? Well, it is, but uh, one of the things that I always try to impress upon people is that our real business is the public health and safety. And you never want to be just enough capacity to meet the needs of the day. You always want to have ability that if something goes wrong, you have redundancy built into your infrastructure so you can find time to make repairs and continue to make sure people have service. So we don't, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, you don't put just enough gas in your airplane to get from point A to point B because if something goes wrong, you really don't want to find out what's going to happen. What we want to do is we want to make sure we have a substantial water system so that under all conditions we can provide service and meet those situations where at times something doesn't go according to plan. Can I assume that uh, the expansion of the water to the south end of the county is fairly new? And that the pipes in, in the stations are fairly new, or are these aging structures? Um, they're not new. We've always had the ability to flow water down there in some capacity. The, the systems have changed. There used to be three water systems in this community, as the Admiral would know, and he was very instrumental when he was on the board to consolidate those three. So we're kind of playing a catch-up game with uh, being able to move water from one system to another. So we have the ability to move it, but years ago it used to go the other way quite a bit. So now, because of the river, we're trying to make that so we can move water further south. And, uh, and it's coming along. And we got a, we've done a lot already, but there needs to be a lot more to be done to make it uh, 
as desirable as we desire we wish to see it jim in simplistic terms your customer base is is along highway 81 you don't really extend out west into the uh uh to the uh you do have a plan in hedgesville but you don't send extend to the georgetown area nor do you extend to the uh to the eastern side uh border uh what are you, what are your plans now you're going to continue to concentrate on the i-81 corridor and how will you extend more to the west and more to the east well that's determined a lot of times by others we don't yeah. we don't initiate where the water goes we respond to the needs if it needs if the system needs to be expanded um, that plant up in Hedgesville has long since been mothballed okay just for yes. interest. I did not know yeah. that okay yeah, yeah. Uh, but we you know we serve out to Hedgesville that's yeah. one of our challenges areas also is because that area is served by uh, the Ridge Road tank yeah. which is tremendously undersized relative to the population it now serves so that's one of the projects we're undertaking to replace that as far as and we go out to Kearneysville okay. as you know so that's a growing area we got another tank out there we want to replace mm -hmm. so we have more capacity in that particular part of the system uh, and then otherwise growth or, or yeah. development is what really determines yeah. if we're going to extend our lines to serve additional areas now Jim you've recently done a study to outline uh, fairly significant needs and you've been trying to pursue money to to meet these needs some through the uh, uh, grants from the uh, from the state uh, uh, from the federal government some you're going to be borrowing money for, for would you address these points sure as we sit here today we have about 131 million dollars worth of infrastructure that we've identified as the next five to seven years uh, we, we're planning on going out to bid for uh, the addition to the river plant as well as a new Bunker Hill plant this summer. Uh, that in itself is in the neighborhood of $90 million. And then we have some water tanks that we need to add in certain areas. So before you get too far along, you're up to $130 million. As we speak, we've identified $52 million in grants that we have qualified for are those generally federal or some of those <clears throat> state as well jim they're they're federal grants and they originate from the federal government they're administered through the state mm -hmm. process and that's great and, and the only reason normally if berkeley county the water rates are relatively low compared to the median household income and the state usually doesn't look favorably upon granting money to those locations where the cost of water isn't that high relative to the income. We were fortunate that we were able to qualify for these loans only because the money has to be invested by 2024 because of this federal infusion of capital into society that was part of yeah. the post-COVID days. Mm -hmm. So we benefited from that only because we had already had the plans in place and we could be quote shovel ready so fortunately some good luck has come our way we're going to be able to qualify for a lot of these loans or grants i should say and then coupled with the grants we had to secure loans from the state and although that's very uh, arduous to get them the interest rate they charge is so much lower than the market today that the customers will be the beneficiary because the interest rates and the, the debt service costs will be that much lower going forward. So we put all this together, but even with all that grants and, and low interest loans, we still need to raise our rates in order to be able to service that debt that we're going to acquire. So that's why we're in the process, not only going through all these capital needs, but also going through a rate case to increase our revenue so we can justify and pay for these uh, debt services we're going to incur. Jim Wallet is our guest. He's the executive director of the uh, Berkeley County Water District. Go ahead, Bill. Okay. So if I can capture your numbers again. So have about $130 million of needs that you've identified. You have about $52 million in grants that you're going to get from uh, from various sources. And so the balance of that, uh, the difference between those two is you'll, you'll seek – 
loans from the state with a low interest rate uh, to, for, to cover the, distance, uh, the difference. You're absolutely correct. But it's, the, uh, uh, but it's because of the loans from the, uh, from the state uh, that you're going to have to do a rate adjustment. Is that correct? That is correct, coupled with the fact that our last rate adjustment was in 2017 for 8%. Uh, previous to that, it was 1.2 in 2013. So we've raised rates less than 10% over the last decade. Interest uh, inflation's up 30%. Yeah. So we got some operating expenses that need to be covered in addition to those capital needs that we need to service. And my information is very dated, Jim. Uh, but I last time I saw that the Berkeley County Public Service Water District uh, was in the probably the lower third of the uh, compared to other districts for uh, for the rates, is that still about still true? Yes, sir. You're correct, and um, it's it's interesting. It, yeah. That's why once again, when we went down to Charleston to obtain grants, they looked at us and they said, "Wait a minute, why are you here? Your rates are too low, and your income in your area is too high. We don't give grants to people in that situation." But by the way, since you're in positions to actually be recipients of this money and we can't give it to anybody else who can spend that much that fast, mm -hmm. we would benefit okay. because we were there. Let's go back to process for a couple of minutes. Uh, you, uh, uh, you ha you've spoken to the county council. Uh, you've had a public hearing with, uh, last Monday, I think, and several people were there, and I, I, I gather it was well-received, good information passed both ways. Then it goes to the uh, county council, soon to be county commission again, for the decision on the rates. They have the ultimate decision on the rates. Is that correct? Yes, sir. They are the uh, ultimate bit decider of what the rates will be. So we've proposed what they should yeah. be, what we just we think they should be. They evaluate that. They can they can change them, they can approve them as is, or they can reject them altogether. Yeah, uh, one of the interesting things is that until about four years or so ago, uh, all of this had to be done through the Public Service Commission. And to say that was tedious and to say that there was a a, literally a crapshoot of what was going to happen was an understatement. So it is it has enhanced considerably the fact that the legislators have shifted this decision making from the Public Service Commission to the County Council. Is that correct? I couldn't say it any better okay, than that. Yeah. Uh, as I understand it, it was a uh, laborious, uncertain, and West Virginia has a history of asking utilities to to not be proactive. Yeah, but to get in a problem and then be reactive, and we, with the yeah. concert with the county council, will hope to be proactive so we can stay ahead of our needs and be in a position that if somebody else comes to town and needs a lot of water, we can support that economic development. Yeah. Also, going back to the days of the Public Service Commission, it was very political, and they made the decisions on politics, and there was a bias. We've heard this before. There was a bias from the uh, against the Eastern Panhandle, and to some degree against the Northern Panhandle as well. Uh, and so we were often judged by the same standards as the less developed, less aggressive, less uh, 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 less proactive advanced, proactive uh, parts of the state. Thank you, Rob. I'm here to help. <laughs> and uh, you do a great job. <laughs> Jim, I want to go back to something you mentioned just a moment ago, and that was making sure there's enough water to allow for development in Berkeley County. When Sandy Hamilton was the economic development director in Berkeley County, on her way out when she was leaving the position, she mentioned that she had personally informed a few different, uh, I guess, larger corporations that – this would not be an ideal place for them, and I'm probably paraphrasing here, because we would not be able to meet their water needs. Is Berkeley County in a situation where that needs to be taken into consideration when it comes to large places that might want to move here? Do we need to screen that and make sure that we don't accept a job that's too big for the water supply? Well, certainly. For the reasons I mentioned earlier, you never want to have an insignificant uh, amount of surplus capacity to meet the needs of the public. Having said that, this is why we're engaged in this process of expanding the river plant from 6 million gallons a day to 10 million gallons a day. We're going to rebuild the Bunker Hill plant with more capacity, and then we hope to find more sources of water to bring to that plant. So, And we also hope that someday there'll be a, a better interaction between us and the city of Martinsburg, who 
conventional wisdom suggests they have a surplus supply of water above what they need on a continuous basis. So if we look at a holistic approach to our water needs in the community, hopefully we can all work together to address that. So yeah, we're trying to position ourselves better so that if somebody does come to town that's desirable to be here, we'll be able to provide water service for them. And that's why we're building but all these pipes and plants. Does but, that cooperation with the city mean ultimately a merger between the two departments or just a better cooperative agreement on water sharing? Uh, yeah, we don't need a merger. We already have an agreement with them to secure up to a million gallons a day as needed. And uh, they have a you know, they just have a surplus capacity in their facilities. Uh, they're not growing because we kind of landlock them, mm -hmm. surround them. So uh, it's just an opportunity, and they're, they're wonderful to work with. They're always helpful whenever we need them. Just something, we're talking five, ten years out. So one of the projects we have underway right now is to enhance our ability to receive water from them and move it into the industrial zone, as we refer to it, so that in times of need or down the road many years, there'll be an opportunity to utilize what a resource they're sitting on that may not be optimally being used. Staying on the development theme, when a large development is being planned and permitted in Berkeley County, do you have input on whether it's a smart idea to move along with that development, or is it your job to just find the water to make it work? Oh, no. We're, you've got to start with what you, you can't create, and that's the water. So the first variable is, do we have the capacity to provide that service? Otherwise, why continue the conversation? So we're up front when it comes, we're the first process when it comes to if somebody can actually move to our community. Are there certain areas of the county right now where you would have to examine more thoroughly than others? <clears throat> there is um, the waters up here <clears throat> in the north end of town at the river plant, mm -hmm. and that's where our largest pipes are to convey that water out. So we're in a better position to provide large volumes of water up in the northern end of the county, and that's why, as we mentioned earlier, we're trying to enhance our ability to move water further south. Uh, so yes, there's there's a better situation up here because it's more developed and it's a uh, the, the water system's more developed mm -hmm. with tanks and pipes and so spring that. mills can develop more easily and continue to grow than another area of the county for instance because they're closer to the main water supply that would be a fair assessment also the the uh the springs and spring mill area are you still investigating that there's some wonderful springs in that area harlan harlan springs we have we have some wells that were installed uh, on St. Andrews Drive yeah, yeah. before I arrived, but that's our only groundwater supply mm -hmm. other than the river. The, but we have plenty of water in the river. Yes. And so we're not really in need of more water sources up north. We simply are trying to find some more down in the southern end of the county so you don't have to move the water. The water's pretty heavy. Yeah. You know, We actually produce 56 million pounds of water a day. When you think of it that way, we delivered into your home under pressure. That's a lot of energy to move that kind of volume of, uh, if, of mass. If you had to put new distribution lines in, there used to be a number of around a million dollars a mile. Does that number still hold true? Oh, it all depends on where you are. And the rock, uh, I understand know, that. Yeah. yeah. We usually figure, you know, a couple hundred dollars a foot. I'm not sure if that conveys yeah. out to uh, I, I don't have a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. So it's it's not getting any less expensive, yeah. Yeah. that's for sure, yeah. these days. Uh, the uh, vice chair of uh, finance in the House, John Hardy, says the legislature has infused $422 million into the Water Development Authority and IJDC. That's where the grants are coming from. Thank you for that clarification, John. And, Jim, we are out of time. I want to thank you for yours. Good stuff, great information. 